Hello everybody, welcome back to Wildlife Sydney Zoo. My name is Caroline, we've got Shania and Scott over there with two lovely kangaroo ladies. Now, today we're gonna to tell you guys all about probably what is the most iconic and famous uh, animal that we have here in Australia. I'm gonna turn around and we're gonna let Shania and Scott tell you guys all about these girls and about their species. I'm Shania. Uh, so these girls here are two beautiful kangaroo island kangaroos. So they're much darker than your standard kangaroo found here on the east coast of Australia. So the ones here on the east coast are called Lynx. Uh, with here we have five, almost five year old Dot. She turns five this month, so it's going to be her birthday in a couple of weeks. Next to her we have Dot. Here is nearly two years old, so once she hits two, she's actually going to become an adult kangaroo. So these girls are part of what we call the macropod family. So just like little Daisy Aquaka, you have lovely huge feet. You can see them there. Just having some technical difficulties, but I hope you guys are all still with us. <laughs> she wants to show you all her feet. All right. So Dot here is a chocolate brown colour because she's found on Kangaroo Island. Kangaroo Island is actually off our south coast of South Australia. So it is quite cold down there for part of the year and this species has adapted to be a little bit darker to try and keep themselves nice and warm through those cold, uh, cold days. But our beautiful girls here also have really thick, soft fur and that also helps to trap in all of that heat to keep themselves nice and warm. If you look here on their chest and underneath her arms, it's quite light in colour. That's basically the colour of your local species here on the east coast of Australia. So they're very, very different, and that's just based off the different climates that they do live in. So here we are, let's Scott take over with a little bit of information. Yeah, so these girls are, like Shania said, called kangaroo island kangaroos. So kangaroo island kangaroos are subspecies of the western grey. So western grey kangaroos found just like the name suggests, on the western side of Australia and down into South Australia. Now the really big, well-known kangaroos, those ones are called the reds. Now we don't have any reds here, but they're the ones that would be the real iconic ones. Now me, I'm, you can tell by my accent, I didn't grow up here in Australia. I'm from the United States. And for me, growing up, when I think kangaroo, I would think the big reds. A big male red kangaroo can be over six and a half feet tall. So they're absolutely massive. And some of them look like bodybuilders. They have big ripped muscles. And when they stand up and hold their chest proud, they're really a sight to behold. And so those are the real iconic ones. Here, these two girls are actually the Western Greys. They're the smallest species of kangaroo. So they're really small, they're very lovely, and they're really good, very calm girls to have here in our zoo. So guys, we are getting a few questions in, but if anybody does have questions, please feel free to write them down. We're gonna try our best to answer as many as we can. But Shania, perhaps you can answer um, this question from Renee. She asked, how big are they when they're born? So when they're born, they're actually surprisingly tiny. So we were mentioning about the marsupials and how they have the pouch. So these kangaroos are probably the most famous animal to have that pouch. So when they're born, they're actually almost the size of a jelly bean. So about two centimeters. <laughs> or dust snoot. It's about two centimeters. Hi. When they are born, they're completely furless, completely blind, completely deaf. All they have is a nose, sense of smell, and a mouth and little arms. So if you can see here, I'll get you up to stand up and you can actually see where the pouch is. And just keeping in mind, this little baby has to climb all the way from here to yeah, here. Oh, well, just where dust too is many pointing. kangaroo faces in the way. <laughs> there we go, guys. So that's her pouch, just there. One second, I'll get another piece of corn. Mm. She sits up, she likes to watch where my fingers are going. One more time, Dot. Here we go. And then this is her pouch, just there. Can you see that, Caroline? Yeah, we can. A little bit more. That's awesome. So very, very small in size, and that's because their pregnancy time is really, really short. So a pregnancy for any marsupial can range from just under a month to just over a month. So one of the shortest, I believe, is around 11 to 18 days. For these girls, it's around 35 to 38 days. That's amazing. Can you tell us what you're feeding um, Dot there? It looks like she is really enjoying it. So Dot uh, absolutely loves food. I love to compare these girls to a chocolate Labrador. Um, and that's because they're the same colour, they love food just as much, but their food is kind of healthy. It's 
Give one second. It's some dried corn. So this is really delicious for them because kangaroo food is really boring. Uh, it's grass. Uh, no one really likes to eat grass. There's nothing in grass. There's no sugar, no fat, nothing tasty that we like to eat. And kangaroos are similar to us in the way it has a tiny bit of sugar, but they absolutely love it. That was my fingernail. Thank you, Dot. <laughs> Awesome. So here at the zoo you'll find uh, all of our trees, all of the tree roots, the bark, uh, the leaves off these trees uh, are all edible to us um, girls here. So everything is safe for them to eat if they do decide to eat it. Uh, you will find that Dusk here likes to eat our real life uh, fence posts. So the fence posts are just... Hand over to the fence post. There's one there that has been nibbled on. <laughs> and when you catch her, she just kind of stares at you like, oh, I've done something wrong. <laughs> Just so everyone is aware, I'm sitting here trying to film and I got pooped on by a real life bird in Kangaroo Walkabout. This is Zookeeper Life. Welcome to the zoo. Lovely. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, why do they stand on their back? So this might be a good opportunity for us to talk about boxing kangaroos because I think everybody know, has heard of a boxing kangaroo before. Yeah, so it's why do they stand on their, kind of like they stand on their tail. Mm -hmm. So kangaroos, they mostly when they're going to walk, they're going to have this kind of a hunched position. Now when a kangaroo needs to get itself up and make itself really big, and for the most part make itself intimidating, that kangaroo's going to lean back on this tail. These tails are really strong and incredibly muscular. So they can really support their weight. In fact, kangaroos, mm -hmm. while they're really known for being able to hop and travel long distances, they need a little bit of a help and a little bit of assistance to go short distances. So they'll actually use that tail to scooch it forward and then help push themselves forward along the ground. Now that tail itself, also when they want to stand up and make themselves really tall, they push it firmly into the ground and that's when they can lean back. And that's when you get the idea of and hear about the boxing kangaroo. So they'll use that position to make themselves tall because that's when they're going to be intimidating and to when they want to have somebody that they kind of need to show off to. Have someone that maybe they're having a little bit of conflict out in the wild. They need to, particular males, need to show which one who's in charge. So they'll lean back on that tail and that's when they became known as a boxing kangaroo. Because they'll get close to each other and they'll use their their relatively short arms to push at each other in what looks like boxing. But really that's just for show. When a kangaroo really wants to, I guess, do some damage, it wouldn't use those arms, it would use those feet. They lean back on the tail and they would Girl. kick the feet out forward. And that is... Yeah, we'll get them to kind of stand up. You can see it then get nice and tall. Awesome. And imagine both feet off the floor into the opponent. So Dot just <laughs> wants to cuddle my arm and eat the corn in my hands. So just imagine it a lot scarier looking. <laughs> Generally what a boxing kangaroo looks like. Now guys, these lovely ladies are pretty comfortable around you guys. Um, what do you, do you guys want to tell us a little bit about why they're such calm natured um, and whether or not they would be like that if they were in the wild? So because these girls are actually um, on an island, they are called the Kangaroo Island Kangaroo. Uh, being separated on that island for so long, uh, they've actually become a slower moving species because there's no natural predators found on that island. So there's no dingoes, there's no crocodiles, there's nothing trying to eat them 24 seven. And so because of that, they're actually a lot less skittish, say, than other species such as your Eastern Grey Kangaroo. <laughs> Plus, on top of that, Beautiful Dot and Dusk here have actually been hand raised by keepers at the zoo, including Miss Caroline behind the camera. So mm -hmm. Caroline is Dot's mum. Uh, so Caroline raised Dot about four and a bit years ago. You uh, can she tell because she's the best. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> hey, that was Dusk. No, and Dusk here was hand raised by myself, Scott, and a few other of us keepers here at the zoo. Uh, and so because they have been raised from such a young age here with us at the zoo, they know that we're safe, that we're not scary. We bring the yummy food, the cuddles and the love. And so they see us as part of their mob. We didn't just hand raise them for any old reason though. Unfortunately, our beautiful girls here in the wild had a bit of a rough start. So you will notice, uh, or you would have heard us say that they have a pouch. A lot of people don't realize that when you're driving around Australia that our kangaroos don't quite understand road rules and often become victims of car accidents. So because of this, uh, Dut here was found on the side of the road inside her mother's pouch and Dusk was found a few, 
few years later in the same situation. So unfortunately, Dust and Dot both lost their mumps uh, out in the wild, but thankfully somebody stopped, they checked that pouch, and they actually found a little Dusk and little Dot inside. So if no one had actually stopped for them, unfortunately they would have uh, either frozen or starved to death in the pouch, but thankfully someone awesome stopped and sent them straight to wildlife care. So if you guys are ever driving around Australia, please stop if you find an animal on the side of the road, regardless of if you've hit it or not. If you could stop, have a look and see if it has a pouch. Uh, if it doesn't have a pouch, then it's probably a boy and you won't have to look for a joey. If it does have a pouch though, and if you're not comfortable on touching that animal, all you have to do is look, and I'll point out where that pouch is again, just for you guys. So that pouch is just here. The way I like to describe it, is called the furry belly button. It's about the same place as where your belly button sits and it's like a tuft of fur. So a lot of people think it looks like the pocket on your jeans, but it's actually like a little circle that um, opens and closes as she needs it or as the joey enters or exits. Uh, but, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, so when you do stop, please look for that area. If you see any movement, all you need to do is call a wildlife service or a local vet and they'll be able to help you out. Uh, here in Sydney we have things like Wires or Wildlife Ark and they're really good places that you can call up to help uh, with a rescue of an animal. Keeping in mind that most of our mammals here in Australia, except for things like bats and monotremes, have a pouch. So that's a quite a few of them. So if you do stop, please check it out. Uh, if you do find that there is a spray painted mark on that animal on the side of the road, it means someone's already stopped to check as well. So we are quite lucky to have uh, rescue facilities that do volunteer and are paid to help out with our wildlife. And if you guys are ever looking to help out yourselves, definitely get online and have a look to see if there's ways that you can uh, jump on board for those organisations as well. Awesome, thank you. And I do have to, uh, I will add on to that as well. It's really important that if you do find young inside of a pouch, then not only do you call that those organisations, but unless you're trained to do so, don't try to take it out yourself. Because a lot of those animals, they really need very specific care and you might accidentally do more harm than good. So it's definitely, like I said, important to give one of those organizations a call. Yeah, definitely don't go feeding cow's milk to our little baby joeys. Unfortunately, most of them are lactose intolerant like a lot of people are. So we've got to be very careful of what we feed them, particularly when they're that young. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. So we got a question here from Amy. She asked if kangaroos have good hearing. So we have an awesome view of Dot's giant ears from here. So what do you guys want to tell us a little bit about their hearing? Do you want to take care? Sweet. So you can notice they do have giant ears. <laughs> uh, so that is a pretty good indication that they have amazing hearing. So you'll notice when I move and click around that they're constantly twitching and they're constantly um, listening for predators and sounds. You'll find with a species such as a red or an eastern grey uh, that I've found here on the mainland with lots of predators, their ears are always really high, really alert, and are constantly moving. Which brings me to a point that they can actually move their ears independently and they can't move their feet independently, which is quite funny. Uh, but they're constantly on alert as kangaroos are a prey animal um, out there in the wild here in Australia. These girls are quite lucky to be separated on Kangaroo Island, which is now predator free. Awesome. All right, well, I think we have time for one more question um, and I have lost who asked it, but um, the question was how long can kangaroos live and how old are our kangaroos? Um, so kangaroos typically have about the same lifespan as your dog back home. So often they live between 12 to 14 years. They can get a little bit older in captivity, but typically between 12 to 14. Now, Dusk here, she is just about two years old. And Dot, who is now over there playing with a stick, she is um, turning five this month. Oh, that's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for all of your amazing information about our beautiful kangaroos. And thank you, everybody who joined us today. We probably didn't get to all of the questions, but we'll do our best to answer you a little bit later on. But for now, everybody say goodbye to the beautiful dusk and to our beautiful keepers. But thank you so much all for checking in and keep your eye on our social channels for, uh, for anything um, that's coming up soon. But thank you again, guys. We'll see you soon.